Okay, uh, here's the cutoffs or the with the coolant pump that's given me grief over the years. The original plastic tank was rubbish, uh, so I cut off a heavy duty plastic bucket, made up a bit of a top, and put it on there. I'll show you the problem with the uh, pump later, the real problem. The other thing that's uh, wrong with it is uh, these guide bearings. Uh, I think that one's seized. They're all uh, corroded, so it's time to replace them with the stainless steel ones. So that's the job for today. Okay, here's the uh, original cast aluminium um, impeller housing, which I'm going to replace with the plastic one. So uh, I've had this apart recently. I had to replace those screws. Uh, they were corroded badly too, so I had to drill them out and then uh, fix them, uh, pull the remaining threads out with a set of vice grips and I eventually got it out and I'll show you the, I don't know whether you can see it there or not, but you can see how badly corroded it is. Okay, we've got the impeller housing off. Here it is down there. This was only taken off about three or four days ago to do the initial repair and look how much corrosion there is already. Um, after about three days. Uh, obviously the wrong choice of materials. I'm going to replace it with plastic, see how we go. Okay, today I've designed this uh, coolant pump impeller housing to replace the old uh, cast aluminium one that was corroding to pieces. This is, uh, I think it's ABS plastic. Um, it's something I found in a rubbish bin but it uh, machined up well and it shouldn't corrode like the original one. So I did this sketch, extruded at 19 millimeters. I just reverse engineered the original uh, uh, impeller housing. Just measured it all up and just uh, reverse engineered it. It had this locating uh, cut boss, internal boss, where it locates on the original cast iron body. I then added a um, bore, 57mm by 16mm deep. I then added uh, uh, this hole here and then patterned it. I ended up not using these counterboard holes, I, I ended up using an ordinary um, uh, just drilled hole and it worked out fine because there was plenty of clearance at the bottom of the uh, coolant tank to uh, accommodate that. And then I did this sketch here for the, uh, I called it an involute, but it's the discharge path for the impeller. The fluid comes up, uh, spins around here, come, forces it up through the hole when the cast iron and out up to the uh, saw. Um, this section here is just a spline that I did by eye and it worked out quite well with a fair few points on it. I've put a 4.2 millimeter radius there and extruded it or cut it out. I added this little fillet here on the corner there just to so that the uh, cutter would come around and take that sharp edge off uh, and then of course the datum for the, the entire job. So if we go across to the cam system, uh, the first thing I did was the drilling process uh, with a four and a half millimetre drill, the locating pocket that's one millimetre deep. Um, all this is done from here on with an eight millimetre uh, end mill, the main bore, uh, the, I roughed out the involute or the, the discharge chute. I then finished it, um, and then for the stock, uh, I 
did this adaptive clearing to get rid of all that stuff to make the circular pattern and then finished it off. So if we grab the whole job, you can see the stock here. I've added um, a millimetre either side of that. The, the finished size is 90 millimetres in diameter, so I cut it uh, 92 by 92, the, uh, the stock. And uh, I decided that the top of the stock was going to be also the finished surface, and there's, there's three millimetres underneath here. The, the stock actually was 20 millimetres thick, um, and I only needed the thing to be, uh, I think, uh, 19 millimetres uh, long. Um, so what I did was I cut it down to 17 millimetres and then finished it in the manual lathe and I could grip it onto a circular surface. So if we simulate the entire job and get rid of the two part, tool path, show the stock uh, and then we that's the first operation is drilling so the only tool change was to grab the 8mm uh, cutter and everything else is done with the 8mm cutter so this is the uh, locating internal boss It, um, just speed this up a little bit. It's the uh, involute being cut now, the outside being cut. And it does a finish cut at the end. That's it. Done. make this um, offset jewel so that the thing would fit into my 
little machine. When I made the first part, I ran into the, uh, the limit switch down here. Uh, so I had to uh, offset the whole job so I could finish it off. Pain in the neck, but now I can uh, uh, utilise the full y-axis travel of this machine. Okay, here's the finished coolant pump impeller housing. Well, it's not finished, I've got to cut this back section off yet, but I'll do that in the lathe. But uh, it uh, machines up very nicely, this stuff. I don't know what it is, it's some plastic that I found in a rubbish bin. Um, we'll see how it goes. These are um, some stainless steel bearings for my uh, cut-off saw for the for the uh, blade guide. There's ten of them all together. Uh, the original ones were rubbish uh, and they corroded and a couple of them were seized so I decided to replace them with stainless steel ones. So I cut the corners off with a hacksaw. Well, I didn't hear it. I'll just finish it off. Right, finished. Pump ready to fit on the pump. The old and the new. Okay. A moment of truth. Oh, yeah. Shaft spins, no fouling. Well, let's see how it goes. See if the coolant pump works. Beautiful. 